The apparatus is that we need a function generator. This is the function generator. What it does is that it just, um, it just like mimics an AC signal from a generation uh, station. So we can input uh, amplitude, we can input um, frequency, period, all those things into this function generator. Then we define our own signal. We can change the type of signal we want depending on what we want. We've got our three options, which is uh, the a uh, the sinusoidal signal, the ramp ramp basically is like a triangular wave, but it only becomes a purely triangular wave if you change the symmetry to fifty percent. Then we've got the uh, square wave. Those are the three types of signals that we can actually give using this function generator. And we just take our output from this output node and we can change the frequency or the range of the frequency from millihertz to megahertz using this node right here. Right, I'll show you in a second how we can actually do this. But what happens on this type of, uh, this particular type of function generator is we can only display certain frequency we can only see frequency from here but we cannot see the amplitude that we're giving in we need to give an amplitude when you're defining a signal of course so we need to give an amplitude we cannot only we cannot only uh, we cannot see it here we can only see it from the oscilloscope so that being the other type of uh, apparatus that we need for this experiment is the oscilloscope so the oscilloscope i shall just switch it on quickly let me just switch on the function generator quickly as well so like what I said, the function generator just displays. This display you see here is the frequency. So you can turn this knob, right? It gives you different ranges of frequencies. So the oscilloscope, it's more like a graph paper, right? It just displays, right? In its original setting, the oscilloscope displays voltages. It displays the voltage signals, basically. Uh, it doesn't display current, but there's a way from those who were uh, in the first lab, there's a way of actually displaying current on the oscilloscope, but it's just designed originally to display voltages. It can display input voltage, output voltage, depending on whatever voltage you're measuring across different components in a second. So it displays voltage and it has two axes, like just a, like a graph here, but it's got the Y axis and the X axis. So the Y axis, basically the amplitude axis, it displays the voltage, the amplitude of the voltage. Then the X axis, it's the time axis. It displays the frequency period, you know, all those uh, uh, signal characteristics that are related to the time with the frequency and period. You can display it in the uh, X axis. So each and every, since there are boxes here, yeah, each and every boxes, they are represented with a certain what we call channel division. If they write like in this one, they wrote channel one, five V. It means each box right in the Y axis, each box in small square, it represents five volts right so if your signal is covering four of those boxes it means it is 20 volts peak to peak in other words then in the uh, time division like it's a time here it's 2.5 milliseconds it means one box in this one without any input voltage or any input signal being put it means one box right now it's being represented by 2.5 milliseconds so this is uh the oscilloscope it just displays right we can play around with the oscilloscope to uh to measure different things once there's a signal coming in which we shall see during the uh, course of this experiment and the third component that we needed was a protec dmm dmm meaning digital multimeter so this is the protec uh, digital multimeter that we'll be using in this experiment so in this protec digital multimeter as you can see i've got these two probes right i've got these two probes with me okay so these two probes are just basically what we call dmm probes digital multimeter probes so there's the black one okay the colors okay we try to say black should go to the ground and um red should be the positive one but it does not really matter if you change these it does not change anything in this particular uh, sort of uh, apparatus but just try to keep that in mind right like black we, we usually put it on the ground and red we put it either we want to measure current or voltage so it's a digital multimeter right it measures rms values it measures current and voltage rms values but not only that it can measure uh, inductance it can measure capacitance it can measure if a diode is working or not you see when we start using diodes it can measure different sort of i uh, can measure frequency it can measure 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 many um sort of uh uh, operations so but what we do is we always keep the ground on the com there's com there's micro a dot v this is voltage 
then there's milli a this is this side is for current with milli a and 20 a this is for current side this is the voltage side so if you want to measure current normally we we work with milliamps in here or even microamps so for us not to uh confuse the scale what we normally do is we work in um in milliamps so if you want to measure current you just put it in milliamps and what you do next is that you just turn this knob right clockwise or anti-clockwise you just put it on 20 ohms on on, on milliamps once it's on milliamps it can now measure current so only if you are measuring current you put this one either on milliamps or on 20 amps but you see now it's beeping because i put it on 20 amps but this knob is on milliamps so for it to measure under 20 amps instruction you just move this here then it switches off right so this is for measuring current but when you're measuring voltage and anything else other than voltage right anything else other than current voltage and anything else other than current you have to put it on the voltage side this means if you want to measure the temperature if you want to measure the capacitance or the inductance if you want to measure the diode whether that is operating is all uh, not broken or not whether you want to measure the resistance you want to measure the voltage in decibels you want to measure the voltage you want to measure voltage frequency and whatever what everything else that you need to measure you need to put this probe on the voltage side this is very important you need to put this probe on the voltage side this is on this um Protec 506 digital multimeter, which is one of the apparatus that we need to use. And now on the lab manual, it says more apparatus that we need are the one kilo ohm resistor, 100 ohm resistor, 0 0.1 uh, microfarad capacitor, and it was written 10 milli Henry. Unfortunately, I could not find this in the lab, so we're going to use one milli Henry inductor. Right. So the first thing that we do, of course, the first thing that we do, okay, I didn't introduce this machine. We are not using it right now. I just used it as a stand right now for us to put uh, our, uh, function our function generator for you to actually be able to see it. But this equipment down here is just a DC supply source. It can supply voltages all the way, I think, to 24 volts, if I'm not mistaken. So it's just a DC supply for we are not using for, the, for this experiment. But in case you're wondering what's this, this is just a DC supply voltage so i just used it so we can have a stand a raised stand for our function generator right so the first thing that we do once we get our comp our components the first thing that we do is we try and measure the sizes of the resistors and capacitors that we have right we can measure inductances but depending on the significant figures that are given on this machine sometimes it might be difficult to measure the inductance right but we can measure the resistances and the capacitances to just make sure because we have boxes that are set that we can put our five ohm resistors 10 ohm up to whatever size of resistor that we have but they might be mixed right so we need to actually measure the resistors so as we know we actually use those three color band resistors in here that have three bands and the fourth band representing the resistivity of the resistor right so here what we need is a 1k ohm result or a 1k ohm resistor if i was to just know it off head 1k ohm resistor is represented by colors black right brown black and red those three colors brown black red in that sequence that represents a 1k resistor then brown black brown that stands for 100 ohm resistor so as i can see in those colors what i said was brown black second band and red these three colors represent the size of the, the resistor being 1k and the fourth color at the other end which is gold in this case it represents the resistivity that means the deviation from the uh, actual result so resistivity of this if it's five percent it means this resistor can measure maybe from 1005 ohms to 1050 ohms to 950 ohms something like that so that's what the resistivity stands for so this one should be our 1k resistor but i'll measure it just to confirm and this one should be our 100 ohm resistor but i'll measure just to confirm and our one milli henry inductor is just something like this that we're gonna use and our 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor is something like that. We we'll measure it again just to confirm. So now, like what I said, we put this one on the we put this one on the um, voltage measuring side. Once we put it on the voltage measuring side, we set this knob. We want to measure resistance first. We just set it 
till it comes here where it measures resistances now we want to measure these resistances if they are correct right so okay fine it's refusing to stand what i'll do like what i know a resistor is just a passive circuit element so it does not matter where i put the positive side or the negative side of this uh these probes then i want to see how much resistance will i measure right what if i put this across this probe i want to see how much resistance as i said this should be a 1k resistor right as we can see it's 986 ohms right 0.986 kilo so it means this is a 1k resistor that's correct so i put it down then now nextly i measured the one i'm suspecting to be a 100 ohm i just put it here and here right then there we go here and here it's measuring 100 and 100.4 okay let me just raise it up this one measuring 100.4 ohms yeah so that means it's a 100 ohm resistor now that's fine now i want us to measure the value of the capacitance right like what i said what we do is we leave this one on the voltage measuring side then we just take the capacitor but we have to change right we have to turn this knob to the capacitance side yep up to there then let's see if we can display our capacitance right so it's supposed to be 0 0.1 microfarad let's see that there we go Oh, one minute yeah there we go yeah 0 0.1 microfarad 0 0.10 microfarad so we're using the correct capacitor right like what i said if you want to measure the inductance you just do the same thing what you do is you just press there's a button written function here so you just press this button function then it changes it shows this inductor then it's already in henry's then you can measure the value of the inductance yeah you can you can do that anytime right good so now we proceed with the experiment now we haven't finished checking we haven't finished checking we're finished checking our component the size of the resistors and everything but we haven't finished checking what we should check because they are probe. okay these cables would be right here these cables that i just put right there they are called probes right so they have different names of probes these two cables right these two cables with this side being the positive of the cable and this side this side being the negative which is ground this is positive this is negative of ground these cables these cables and they have the other end which looks like this right these cables they are called oscilloscope probes they are supposed to be on this so we have two channel outputs of an oscilloscope so you can put this cable on channel one then another cable exactly like that one we put it on channel two these channels okay as there are two we can display meaning two signals at once on the oscilloscope we can display the input signal and the output signal from the oscilloscope then now we have another cable because we need to take the output from the function generator right we need to take the output so we use this cable right we use this cable so this cable normally uh we call it a b and c probe right we call it a bnc a bnc probe it's just well if you see it just has two outputs as well right ground and positive it can work if you put it on the on the uh, oscilloscope as, as well it can work right so but it's actually meant to be from the function generator it's a bnc probe so we put it on the output of the function generator like this right but before i put it here what we need to check is if these cables are working right we need to check if these cables are working because sometimes the cables won't be working the cables will be broken and if you work with a cable that's not working it means it means at the end of the experiment our signal will not come out correctly and we will face problem maybe one hour two hours trying to fix uh, the circuit diagram on itself but maybe it's not the circuit right it's actually the cables so we need to check so checking these cables what they should do we use an oscilloscope to check them with what they should do is they should give us a square wave if they are working but there's a connection there's a connection this side of the oscilloscope if you can see there's this knob of the oscilloscope this side the top one it's the positive side then you connect a ground one to a ground right 
this is channel one that I'm testing. So let me just remove this so that you don't get confused. I'm testing channel one. So what I do is I press auto set. Auto set is like if you're, let's say you're running a simulation, auto set, it works more like um, a run, you know, that run button that you press for your whatever simulation to run that's like auto set so you just press auto set then if you get a square wave it means the, exactly you see you get a square wave it means this cable is working so we just remove it and we put it aside one very good cable what do we do we put another cable you can use any channel to test right you don't you have to use channel one only you can use any channel but i just want that to test one by one so that there's no noise on the oscilloscope so take this one and connect ground to ground and do the same, auto set. You see, the cable is working. If you want us to use channel two to test if the cable is working, if we get the same result, we just auto set again. Exactly. So it means the channels are fine, right? And the cables are fine. So these two oscilloscope cables are working, but we need to check also the BNC probe, which is because this is the probe that will transfer our signal from the function generator, right? So we need to check if it's working. If it's not working, then we will suffer, right? If it's not working, then we are going to suffer. So let's check it out. Connect it to any channel, just like those cables. Connect positive to positive and ground to ground. And we auto set. Exactly, we get a square wave. So it means all our cables are working for now, right? That's perfect, that's very good. So we now put this one, it belongs here, right? Then these are channel cables. This belongs here and this here. Any, what, channel one and channel two output, right? Then the third thing that we're going to use, basically, of course, we are going to, we don't connect those uh, sort of resistors, inductors in the air, right? We connect them on the breadboard. Now, just a few things about the breadboard. These four connections, one, two, three, four, right? They are not connected to this automatically right if you want to use them you have to actually get jumpers from here to the breadboard right otherwise the way it is right now they are not connected here that's the first thing and as you can see breadboard's got um some brilliant colors right blue red white that's what i can see so there are these two sort of columns i can call them columns depending on how i'm holding it or rows if i'm holding it like this there are these two rows right that are in between the red and the blue line these rows are labeled plus and minus these rows these rows are connected if i'm holding it like this they are connected horizontally like this right they are connected horizontally like this. it means if i give five volts at this terminal this whole row it's five volts maybe sometimes up to the middle you know this section here sometimes there's no connection between this side and this side but the assumption is normally is if you put five volts here this whole row is five volts if you put zero volts here this whole row is zero volts so it means just in between these two um lines the black and blue line our rows are connected horizontally like this now if we go into the mid section of the breadboard right this mid section has got one two three a b c d up to e so it goes five sort of points these five points these five points if i'm holding like this they are connected vertically it means if i just put any value here of a voltage it means that whole uh sort of line a to e it's actually now a node right that is exactly the same voltage so it's connected sort of horizontally if i look uh, sorry vertically if i look at the mid section of the breadboard so and the other end is to have again those blue lines and red lines. So this becomes like a one whole breadboard, if I may say, right? So these are just one, about two, three breadboards that are attached to one sort of uh, base, right? To just have more space to work on. So that's this is just the breadboard. We're gonna use it to connect uh, our apparatus. Then of course we will use jumpers. We can call them jumpers. Can call them cables. You know, they're just wires, if I may say, that have minimum resistance, like sort of negligible resistance compared to the resistance of the uh, Sigurd, it's out.